We are studying curvilinear coordinate system. The sigma i, the sigma i is the surface uh, surface element vector whose magnitude is uh, direction of uh, the Epsilon I J K Q I hat D Q J D Q K this kind of time. But this is not a uh, distance, uh, it should be corrected with the HJ DQJ, HK DQK, something like that. Let's see. By the way, this one includes, for example, dx e1 hat, dy e2 hat. The sigma 3 vector is dx dy times e1 cross e2. That means dx dy e3 hat. But if I make use of epsilon i j k, e j hat, e j hat, cross e k hat. Then it includes uh, this kind of form. Then this one has E one E one head cross E two minus E two head cross E one. So it is doubled. This one and this one, these two contributions are the same. So if I write in this way, sum over jk, then I have to multiply one half. So that's the reason why we have one half over a vector in here. All right. So this this is the case where i j k one two three, one two three. Or Q, Q, Q. Three unit vectors are perpendicular and they are cyclic. Q1 cross Q2 equals Q3, something like that. Next, <coughs> next we consider the volume. If I consider the volume, I multiply this vector, the differential displacement vector along the direction of a coordinate Q. The length is H1 dQ1 and the direction is Q1 hat. Then another vector along the 
Q2 direction. Direction is Q2 hat. Magnitude of this displacement is H2 dQ2. And another direction, third direction. Direction is Q3 hat. And length is H3 dQ3. The volume generated by uh, volume of this space is just a product of these lengths h1, h2, h3 and dq1, dq2, dq3 We have a triple scalar product times q1 hat plus q2 hat dot q3. Because we have chosen the system that satisfy this condition, it is just h1, h2, h3, dq1, dq2, dq3. Okay. This, this this sigma one equals q one hat h two h three dq two dq three d sigma two equals to q two hat h three h one dq three dq one d sigma 3 equals q3 hat h1 h2 dq1 dq2 all right next one total differential of a scalar field in the cartesian coordinate system d5 is the phi of x1 x2 and x3 three Cartesian coordinates so I take the partial derivative and dx1 the partial derivative with respect to x2 and dx2 and dx3 by dx3 and, and actually this is a gradient phi that dx another way of expressing the total differential of a scalar field in terms of q1 q2 and q3 it's the same q1 phi dq1 q2 Phi dq2 q3 dq3 and actually this 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 may not be a distance so in order to relate this one with the gradient it's uh, better to use this notation h1 uh, q1 phi and because I multiply this one, so h1 dq1 to make this one as a distance in a similar manner. This is everything can be understood as um,
and this is gradient i in the curvy linear coordinate system with the scalar product of dx dx expressed in, in the spiral of uh, this curvy linear coordinate we record that the unit vector qi hat along the direction of increasing the curvy linear coordinate qi that qi hat can be obtained by taking the partial derivative of position vector with respect to the coordinate qi as you as we know the differentiation of this position vector gives uh, sometimes sometimes dimensionless number in case this coordinate is uh, has the dimensions of length however if we choose the angle as the generalized coordinate then we have non-unity vector that is a scale vector let's see the derivative of position vector with respect to the curvilinear coordinate qi has some magnitude and direction and this vector is a parallel to the unit vector along the direction on which qi increases keeping the, all the other curvilinear coordinates fixed in that case the magnitude of this vector is called the scale factor hi and the magnitude is multiplied here and then we multiply the direction unit unit vector along the qi coordinate if we make use of this in here the differential dx along the qi with qj fixed or j is not equal to i equals hi dqi qi hat not sum over i but if i allow all the variations then i have to add all, all three pieces together so dx is partial derivative of q1 times the differential of q1 plus q2 and q3 case and here sum over i the magnitude of this one is h hi so hi dqi and the direction of uh, uh, this partial derivative is determined by the unit vector of qi let's consider this uh, later uh, here we remember x vector can be expanded as xj ej hat sum over j if i multiply 
EJ vector, EJ hat vector, both sides, as a scalar product, then I find the partial derivative of xj with respect to the curvilinear coordinate qi. Then we find that we have hi, scale factor hi here, and the scalar product between qi hat and ej hat. This is the direction cosine of two coordinate system. The total differential for the scalar function expanded in terms of curvilinear uh, uh, Cartesian coordinates, uh, the gradient dot dx, just like what we have done in the pre previous page. If we expand, it is the dxi multiplied by round phi xi sum over i. In a similar manner, the qi derivative and multiplied by the differential of that coordinate summed over i will be the same as the differential of q. Now we apply the chain rule. If we apply the chain rule, then this qi derivative can be re-expressed in terms of uh, xj derivative multiplied by xj derivative with respect to qi and sum over j. We remember we have computed the xj derivative with respect to qi is hi times the direction of cosine that relates the uh, curvilinear coordinates and the Cartesian coordinate. Therefore, we bring this one in here. Qj, uh, xj, qi. xj, qi is hi, hi, qi dot ej, qi dot ej. And this one is a uh, gradient phi is the jth element, jth component of the gradient phi. J is a Cartesian. So, J Cartesian and EJ gradient to phi J EJ hat. This one is actually gradient phi. But this EJ has a scalar product with Q I hat. Therefore, after combining this jj, we end up with qi hat. Therefore, this is a qi hat dot gradient phi, and this one. Now, we end up with the expression that this is a delta phi dot dx. This dx, dx in, in the curvilinear coordinates is a hi dqi qi right so in summary the gradient phi can be expanded in as a linear combination of uh, Cartesian unit vectors with the components a partial derivative of phi with respect to the Cartesian coordinate xi. If we make use of the curvilinear coordinate system, the gradient phi is 
a linear combination of uh, unit vectors qi hat and whose component is round phi over differential of dimension of length. That means not qi partial derivative but hi round qi. Okay? This one has the length. Next, we, com we compute the gradient, gradient of qi. Gradient of qi can be computed by making use of this one. Gradient phi is this one. So instead of phi, we substitute qi. So co we copy this one, but I need to use index i, so I replace this dumb indices with j. So qj hat, hj, and round qj. But we know that qi, round qi over round qj, this is just chronic delta. Let's see. Xi, partial derivative with respect to xj, is chronic delta. Suppose that x, partial derivative with respect to y, equals 0, x, x equals 1, something like that. In a similar manner, if you use the curvy linear coordinate system, the same is true. For example, round y, round theta, 0, round theta, round theta equals 1, something like that. So again, we have chronic delta for the partial derivative of qi with respect to qj. Therefore, we have qj, 1 over hj, and delta ij. Yeah, delta ij is here. If I sum over j, this uh, this will replace j's with the i. So it is it becomes qi hat over hi. So another expression is unit vector unit vector along the qi direction can be expressed as a gradient the denominator can be shifted to the, the numerator of the left side so qi the dimension of qi uh, the unit vector along the i curvilinear coordinate is the scale vector multiplied by the gradient of the coordinate and here this is no sum this is a very very important presentation and here is our result again we can make use of this one and we also make use of the fact that the all the QIs, Q1, Q, no, just like the Cartesian coordinates, E1 cross E2 equals E3, E2 cross E3 equals E1, E3 cross E1 equals E2. Curvy linear coordinate system that we consider a uh, cylindrical coordinate system and spherical polar coordinate system. These cases, we have the cyclic triads, so E R E theta cross product becomes E phi, E theta cross E phi becomes E R, E phi, E R, E theta. Thus, we can we can express in this way. So, Q one. 
hat equals q2 hat plus q3 hat but that is h2 h3 gradient q2 cross gradient q3 q2 hat equals 3 1 q3 cross product q1 q3 hat equals q h1 h2 gradient q1 plus gradient q2 okay these relations will be extensively used to to find the expression for the divergence and curve in the curvilinear coordinate system Next one is divergence of two uh, divergence of cross product of two gradients for different scalar field is always zero. It's very very important. Okay, this is just like a triple scalar product. Let me write a dot b cross the c style. Here a is a gradient, b equals a gradient phi, and this is psi. C equals a gradient psi. Epsilon i j k a i b j and c k. Substitute these things epsilon i j k gradient. No, it is just a derivative itself and x j phi x k psi. This is derivative. I have epsilon i j k double derivative on phi and single derivative of psi plus epsilon i j k single derivative for phi and double derivative of psi. We remember that this ij derivative they commute. So this And the next one, okay. This one is a symmetric, completely symmetric. This one is completely anti-symmetric. So this is just like epsilon i j k a i j plus a j i style. 
this one is epsilon i j k a i j and if I exchange the dummy variable as a epsilon k j then oh i j i j j r plus epsilon j i k then it becomes i j plus i j j i and then If I exchange this only, then I have negative sign. Same thing cancels. In a similar manner, both guys vanish. We will find that this this divergence of gradient coordinates QI coordinate qj this one is zero because these are scalars next a vector field v can be expressed in terms of the curvy linear coordinates yes this is true because these qis are dimensionless just like the eis in the Cartesian coordinate system. Now let us let us compute the divergence of a vector in a curvilinear coordinate system. As we already have studied, any vector can be expressed in terms of q1 hat v1, q2 hat v2, q3 hat v3 as a linear combination. You know, this, this v1, v2, v3 does not mean the Cartesian coordinate, but for example, er hat vr e theta hat v theta e phi hat v phi or for the spherical polar coordinate system or cylindrical coordinate system e rho hat v rho e phi hat v phi and E Z hat V Z for the cylindrical coordinate system. We would like to know how to compute the divergence in these cases. The divergence of a vector in a curvy linear coordinate system is divergence of Q1 hat v1, q2 hat v2, and q3 hat v3. We have uh, three <coughs> terms. First, we consider the, this term. Divergence of v1, q1 hat it is to be computed. We remember, we remember that The unit vector, unit vector
unit vector q1 hat equals to q2 cross q3 hat in the cyclic, cyclic case. This is each each of them each of them are gradient of that coordinate multiplied by the scale vector. So h2 h3 gradient q2 cross gradient q3. Alright. So in a similar manner q2 hat equals 3 1 gradient q3 plus gradient q1 and q3 hat equal h1 h2 gradient q1 plus gradient q3 okay now we substitute this one so divergence this guy we have v1 h2 h3 v1 q2 gradient cross q3 gradient Let's see, we have a scalar function and a scalar field and vector field. What happens to the divergence scalar vector field? This is I can take the derivative of pi and i and leave the scalar field there and this this is a a dot gradient phi and this is a phi divergence A. Okay. Therefore, this one is A. What is A? This one is A. Dot gradient phi. And phi divergence A. We remember the divergence of cross product of two scalar fields. We, we recall that divergence gradient phi cross the gradient psi that was zero. So we do not have this contribution at all. This one vanishes. Next, we consider this. This is gradient h2, h3, v1, dot
you remember this one. Q, Q2 cross Q3. Q2 cross Q3. Ah, this one is equal to Q1 hat divided by Q2, Q3. Okay. Therefore, this is Q1 hat H2, H3 dot gradient We remember this gradient gradient is can be expanded gradient of a phi in a curvilinear coordinate system is combination of QIs and partial derivative of QI however this is not a length we have to put I in here. Therefore, if I multiply this scalar product of 1, Q1 hat, the only surviving piece is H2, H3, 1, H1, round Q1, round H2, H3, V. This is the result. If I summarize, this one is 1 over h1, h2, h3, round q1, round h2, h3, b. All right. What I have computed on is only this term. Divergence of V1, Q1 hat equals this. Divergence of V2, Q2 hat. This is cyclic. This is common vector. 2, 1 is replaced with 2, and 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 1, this is V1, V2, divergence, V3, Q3, hat, of H1, H2, H3, round Q3, 3, 1, 2, Therefore, divergence of V is the sum of these three pieces. So, for example, spherical polar coordinate Q1, R, Q2, theta, Q3, phi. H1, 1, H2, R, H3, R sine theta. Therefore, divergence of V equals product 
R squared sine theta from R to 3. R squared sine theta V R. Theta 3 1. R sine theta V theta plus phi phi 1 2 r v phi this is the divergence in the spherical polar coordinate system and cylindrical polar cylindrical coordinate system we have Q1, rho, Q2, phi, Q3, z, H1, 1, H2, rho, H3, is 1. Divergence of V in the cylindrical coordinate system is product of this, 1 over rho, rho, Product of this rho v rho phi product one v phi z z product of this rho v z. Let's take a rest and we carry out the cross product next. Next, we study the curve. study the curve. Curve of a vector field. Curve of a vector field is curve curve linear coordinate q1 v1 q2 v2 and q3 v3. We first compute this contribution as in here car q1 hat v1 now we use the fact the gradient we make use of the gradient here. Q1 hat is that this is Q curve. Q1 hat is uh, V1 is here. Gradient of Q1, gradient of Q1, and Q1 has the it does not have the length, so H1 should be multiplied. Now, core of uh, phi a, this is a scalar field and vector field.
this is case compound. Derivative to the first and second piece. This is the first term and second term. We find that the first term is gradient cross A. Gradient phi cross A. And the second term is phi cross A. Therefore, this one is gradient h1 v1 times gradient q1 plus h1 v1 core gradient q1. You know that core gradient, core gradient, core gradient phi equals EI epsilon IJK round XJ round XK phi. JK symmetric, JK anti symmetric, therefore it is zero. So, we do not compute this one. This one will vanish. So, we have this, this contribution of Now, we make use of the coordinates. Here we remember Q1 hat equals H1 gradient Q1. Q2 hat H2 gradient Q2. Q3 hat equals H3 gradient Q3. And from this, gradient Q1 equals Q1 hat H1, gradient Q2, Q2 hat H2, gradient Q3, so Q3 hat over H3. So this one will be replaced with cross Q1 H1 Q1 hat And we remember the gradient operator express gradient operator gradient operator expressed in term in the curvy linear coordinate system so along Q1 hat this is Q1 derivative of h1 v1 but this is not a length I have to multiply h1 in the denominator to make the correct length, uh, length dimensions in the derivative denominator plus q1 
hat, h2 round q2, h1 v1, plus q3 hat, h3 round q3, h1 v1. Cross, h1 q1 cross. So, we find that q1 cross q1 cancel and 2 cross 1 as q3 we have h1 h2 2 cross 1 3 3 1 2 This is the result for the curve of Q1, V1. Curve of Q1, V1. Curve Q1 hat V1 equals, let me copy this result. Q2V2 1 1 2 1 1 2 2 2 3 3 Two, one, two, three, two, three, one, Q one head. One, two. One, one, three. Two, one. First, two, one, and three. Core Q three V three minus three one two three one and two. And this one matches. H3, V3, and H3, H2, Q1, Q2, H3, V3. If I sum everything up, Left hand side is core of vector field, and right hand side Q1 dependent term first, this and this, Q1 hat, common vector is H2, H3, 1, 2, and this is common vector 3 q3 h2 v2 h2 v2 
plus Q2, Q2 dependent. Q2, H1, H3. 1, 2, 2, 3. Here. 2, 3, 1. Now we have this one. 1, 1, and 2, and 2. Minus. Q1 and this is Q3 hat H1 H2 Q1 H2 V2 minus Q2 H1 V1 all right. This is a combination of this vector and this one and this. And actually, if I pull out h1, h2, h3 all together 1 over h1, h2, and h3 then everything is q1 hat h1 right? Q2 hat H2, Q3 hat H3, and remaining piece, pieces are the same. Where is it? It's H1. In the numerator, we put additional factor in the denominator. We have H3, this kind of factor. <coughs> Therefore, we have overall factor H1, H2, and H3, and this is a determinant. Our first row com is consists of H1, Q1. H2, Q2, H3, Q3. Second, second row consists of derivatives. And third row consists of H1, V1, H2, V2, and H3, V3. Okay? Finally, in summary, we have this formula, right? This over vector 1 over h1, h2, h3, and first row h1, q1 hat, h2, q2 hat, and h3, q3 hat, and q1, q2, q3 partial derivatives, and h1, v1, h2, v2, and h3, v3. So, in case, let us apply this feature for computing curve of a vector in, in the cylindrical coordinate system, Q1. Row Q2 Phi Q3 Z H1 1 H2 Row H3 1 
Now the product is a 1 over rho determinant. One times rho e rho hat times rho times e phi hat one times e z hat and derivatives and the third row rho v rho oh no rho v phi and v z in a similar manner I can compute the curve of v equals for sphere curve q1 r q2 theta q3 phi h1 1 h2 r h3 r sine theta so product is this product r square sine theta and unit vectors er hat r e phi uh, e r theta e theta hat r sine theta e phi hat and then derivatives r theta phi and then h v h v v r h r v theta and h v r sine theta v phi so now we can write the curve of a vector field for the spherical coordinate system and the cylindrical coordinate system Okay, let's consider the cylindrical coordinate system x1, x2, x3. Well, we have just uh, found that. And we repeat the derivation of uh, finding e rho, e phi, and e z. First, write down the expression for the displacement. So position vector expressed in terms of the Cartesian coordinates are just the sum of xi, ei hat. And we remember that x1, x2, and x3 are given here. So substitute those results in, in terms of the cylindrical coordinates. And then take the derivative with respect to the first curvilinear coordinates, rho. If I take the derivative, rho disappears in the first two pieces, and this one is independent rho, and cosine sine. The scale factor for rho coordinate is the magnitude of this vector and this magnitude is just 1 and unit vector along the row direction can be obtained by dividing the its own magnitude that is a scale vector in this case scale vector is 1 so the 
planar radial vector rho is e1 hat cosine phi plus e2 sine phi. Next one is to find out the phi direction. This x, we, uh, we take the derivative with respect to phi only. And phi dependence appears on the xy plane only. And that gives cosine is uh, flipped with minus sine phi. And sine becomes cosine phi. Now the magnitude of this vector is the scale factor of a phi, and that is a row. If we divide this uh, row from this derivative, we find that the scale vector row disappears, and we end up with the scale uh, unit vector. It is trivial to find the z component unit vector, and this uh, this is e three. In such a manner, we were able to find the unit vectors for e rho, e phi, and e z. Next, we consider the vector integration. Vector integration for the scalar variable, just like time t, can be made uh, in the Cartesian coordinate system. The unit vector unit vector ei hat is independent of any variable. It is uh, fixed at all. Therefore, we can pull out this unit vector ei from the integral. And each component, each Cartesian component can be integrated separately. And at the end of the day, after integration, we can combine those returns. For example, we can compute the impulse, that is the time integral of the force. And you know, the force is time derivative. So if I integrate over time, we end up with the difference of momentum. So it becomes delta p. We can make use of the Leibniz rule to take the derivative of this cross product. This cross product has, if I take the derivative, then the result is the derivative for the first and for the second. And this one is identical matrix cross product. So this one exactly disappears. The proof is given here. The second one can be expressed as this one minus this. So this one minus this. But as we know, this integral disappears exactly. And this is a total derivative. So the integral can be carried out in such a way. All right. For example, let us compute the torque. Torque is defined by x cross f, and f is time derivative of momentum, and that is mass times velocity. Momentum is mass times velocity, so I have to take a double time derivative. We substitute this one in here to find that x cross double time derivative of x. a times double time derivative of a was a cross time derivative. So this is x times first order time derivative. Mass m was factored out in the non-relativistic case. 
finally this one is mass times velocity so x cross p that is orbital angular moment if I substitute initial and final time the final result will be the difference final and orbital angular momentum subtracted by the initial orbital angular momentum next we consider Dirac delta function because you are graduate students you must be very much familiar with the Dirac delta function and actually although we call it as a delta function it is not a function but a distribution distribution is uh, defined in such a way only defined through integration before integration it is not well defined anyway its value is uh, zero everywhere except for a single single point that is very singular suppose that this is an example a square wave like graph vanishes everywhere except for the region very tiny region from in minus half of epsilon to half of epsilon and the value for non-vanishing region is one of epsilon in that case if we integrate this function its value is just one the height is one of epsilon and the uh, with this epsilon independently of uh, epsilon but we take the limit epsilon goes to infinity there is a very sharp peak if we make use of that conditions integral multiplied by an arbitrary function gives f of zero there are several important relations for the delta functions if a is applied in the argument then absolute value of a is divided something like that and it is an even function if you have some roots then they, are com uh, they become a linear combination of the delta function that has uh, roots placed at roots and over factor is uh, just absolute value of uh, absolute value of the coefficient at that point that single point this one is can be generalized to the three-dimensional case and it is especially useful for computing the uh, divergence of the electric field divergence of electric field that vanishes following this explicit computation for any point non-zero point the divergence cancels exactly however this divergence integrate over the whole region for example if we choose a sphere then it gives a non-vanishing value and this is a q over epsilon zero and finally because the function is a uh, zero everywhere except at uh, at the origin it is proportional to the delta function and if we normalize q over epsilon zero it is just a q over epsilon zero multiplied by the three-dimensional delta function this one can be used to find out the electric field or the charge distribution and actually this is this is point-like charge distribution is uh, uh, the direct delta function okay that's it for today